Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at making an event system. So something that will manage our events in game and let objects alert and react to each other when an event happens. In the footage I'm showing you, we're observing a rain start event. And here we can see that the NPCs are reacting to the rain by either pulling out an umbrella or moving to find shelter. Essentially, those NPCs are able to react to an environmental event even though it has nothing to do with them. Getting different objects to interact like this isn't as straightforward as you might think. So in this video, I'm going to keep going through the concepts of building an event system, some different ways that we can go about it, and some things to consider. And then in the next video, we're going to jump into actually programming it. So if you want to jump ahead, you can, but you're going to miss out on the explanation about why we are setting it out in the way that we are. Let's take a more complicated example of an event. Let's say we have a quest objective to destroy 10 corrupted red shards with our enchanted sword of light. So how is the quest object going to know when we've performed that very specific action? The actual event of destroying a corrupted red shard has nothing to do with the quest object. It's between the player and the red shard through a collision event. And while it's simple enough for the colliding objects to share information, since the built-in collision event allows you to access the other object in the collision, and collision functions like instance place allow you to save the ID of the object you collide with, which you can then use to access it. So the red shard and sword could probably share enough information between them to know that the correct quest interaction has happened, but the quest object isn't involved. So how are we supposed to notify it? Well, we could just write a bunch of if checks and hard code access to the quest object when the right parameters are met. So for example, let's say that we're inside the player's step event. And in the event that we attack, so let's say that that involves a key press or something to swing a sword, then let's check if we collide with an enemy. If we do, then the ID of that enemy is saved in the inst variable. And if we find that that variable is not equal to no one, that is, a collision was found, then let's check what kind of object it is with its object index. And if it is the corrupted red shard object, let's check what weapon we have equipped. And if that is found to be the Sword of Light, and the quest manager destroy shards quest is active, then let's go into the quest manager and trigger some progress in the quest, say, increment this variable here. And that's okay, it'll work, but imagine if we had to add even more code here, say, to check if the quest was finished, and then perform the code for finishing the quest. So already we're cluttering up the player's step event or collision code with a bunch of logic that's only going to be run while the quest is active. And imagine if we introduce even more quests and more conditions to check for. So this player step event is going to have a bunch of momentary logic cluttering up its code. And if that doesn't make you uncomfortable enough, another reason that this isn't very desirable is that we have a pretty important bit of code that the quest system performs in a different object. So this is not very intuitive. Imagine if you come back to this quest months later and wanted to change something, but you couldn't find where you put it. Or still, if you continue with this approach, you could have other big chunks of code for our quests scattered across your entire project, perhaps in tens of different objects. So you can see that this sort of approach is going to get exponentially more difficult to manage as your project gets larger. And one final gripe, it's very difficult to make updates to the code. So imagine if it's later on in the project, maybe you've refined some art assets, added some UI, and you want to make a change to how quests update perhaps by adding an additional pop-up every time you make progress. Well, again, you can't just alter things in the quest object in one place. We're going to have to go around the project, look at every single bit of code related to the quests, and change all of them. So, all of this considered, is there another way we can set this out? Let's come back to our example quest objective of destroying 10 corrupted red shards with the enchanted sword of light. So the problem started when we needed to communicate to the quest object that the objective had been fulfilled. So we need to build a system to allow these objects to communicate with each other. Let's introduce another party, an event manager. And now whenever something happens in the game, so whenever an object is spawned, destroyed, picked up, dropped, when you enter a certain zone, or when you talk to an NPC, anything significant that happens in the game, have it create an event. And there are a couple of ways you could define an event, but regardless, something that has to be common is that you want each event to be unique. 
You could have event types that could contain data about the event, or each event could just have its own unique ID. Regardless, let's have the event fire and then be sent off to the event manager. At this point, the event manager can check if there is anyone listening for that event. It may be that no one is listening for it, in which case it can be discarded. But if there is a listener, then we can take further action. So to become a listener, let's say any object can register itself with the event manager. Kind of like saying, I want to be notified when a certain event X is performed. Not only that, but it could also register a certain action or script that it wants executed as soon as that event gets triggered. You could even make these scripts quite general and allow objects to supply arguments to pass into the scripts they register. So our quest system can register itself for the destroy red shard with light sword event and attach an update quest script that it wants executed when that event happens. That way we've completely decoupled the event from the listener. The player object will no longer need to access the quest system or know anything about it. We don't have to know any of the quest system's variables or functions, we just need to tell it that our event was performed and it will go off and do its own thing. This makes our code a lot easier to maintain. We're not going to have any repeated code, it's going to be kept in one place. And making changes to one thing isn't going to affect the other. So this is going to be the basis of our event system. Okay, but how do we go about coding this in GameMaker? Well, we could use a combination of data structures. So now you could use arrays here, but systems like this often require removing and adding entries. So for example, when there are no longer any listeners for an event, we will want to remove that entry. That's not so easy to do with arrays, because if that entry was somewhere in the middle, you would have to kind of copy any of the later entries and paste it up to fill the blank space. Whereas if we're using something like a map data structure, the order of entries doesn't matter, and we can remove and add entries easily with the built-in functions. So let's have the event manager create a map data structure called the event map. And in this map, we're going to have the registered events themselves as the ID or the key, and then we could store a list of listeners and their associated scripts in the entry. All right, so we've gone over how to build our event system, and in the next video, we'll jump in and actually start coding it. So some of you might have noticed that I haven't been posting many tutorials lately, and that's because I've been concentrating on my own game projects. I've actually started a new channel called Friendly Cosmonaut Dev, where I'm posting development videos for those projects. And they're a bit more casual than the tutorial videos I normally do, but I talk about the game dev process and explain how we are doing things as we're going along. So it's there if you're interested. I also just wanted to thank Scary Moonchild for drawing this because I basically just said, hey, look, I've got this section in my video where I'm going to be talking a lot and there's not really much to show for it. Could you just draw me something that looks a bit like this? Right, so that's the, that's the concept art I gave her and then she turned it into this beautiful drawing. And basically I found it so compelling that I almost want to just go ahead and make a game about her. So thank you so much. So thanks for watching and I hope you guys are well. And I will see you next time.